Greetings there, I'm Mr. Foreman. And I'm Mitchell Wilms. This is Cricket, and we're on a guided trip into the wilds. My name is Russ. I am a professional fishing guide for Gavin and Mitchell. We are going to a very secret fishing hole, and we're going to catch a lot of smallmouth. Whoa, look at this, guys, come here. Look at this. This is an arrowhead that the Indians used back then to shoot deer and turkeys and whatever they could find. It's the one Indian shot it and lost it. They could never find it. We're here almost to the river and we have to make the final descent of our journey straight downhill about 400 feet. Got our pro guide Russell over here, rigging us up so that we can go catch plenty of fish. I'm rigging my guys up with a Rapala. It dives two to three feet and smallmouth love it. We will start off in this big pool, smallmouth like slow water with rocks and stuff to hide. Then I notice big dark shapes in the deeper water, a large school of carp. It's time to change tactics. There are rocky ledges we can use to get up a little higher. Mitchell is on carp catching duty. When one of these big old bruisers takes the hook, I know I've got a good fight to come. There's cattle dogs, there's sheep dogs, and then there's cricket. My first carp. Good five minute fight. Finally got this big old brute. Probably like eight pounds. There's more out there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take long, and I've got another hookup. Carp number two here at our secret fishing spot. Big thanks to my guide Russell for showing me how to catch this awesome specimen. Great fight, another long lasting, hard running fight. Proud to catch another carp. I told you it wasn't bad. What do you think I fish? Now it's time to look for smallmouth in the nearby pond with bushes, rocks, and snags. Yeah. What's this one, Russ? This is a smallmouth. Is it a big one or a little one or a medium? It's a medium size. Russ proposes to cover more area and move farther upstream where a mixture of fast flow and slack little side pools await. 
Russ says it's good to try the fast streams for a chance at either trout or squawfish. Little crickets finding the terrain tough, while Russ finds another school of carp and Mitchell prepares for battle. Hooked onto another big carp, but this time they've got the current in their favor. We're trying again for smallmouth. They really like the little side pools, and sometimes there's really big fish in the shallow water. Stalking these pools, we get a few strikes, but these fish are too wily for us. Later in the day, the caddis swarms over the water, and Russ advises we switch to surface lures. Russ is getting the hits, but he just can't seem to yeah. land these cagey critters. Oh. The smallmouth, been caught it on a gold and black spinnerbait. Seems to be the ticket right now. It's about 6.30 and the bite has just turned on. The hatch is dying and the fish are on. Let's go catch some more. Dinner tonight is potatoes stew, and grilled carne asada. Our guide Russ is taking it easy, as is Cricket. We don't want either of them to overexert themselves. Well, after today's results, we can definitely tell our guide Russ is a professional guide. I've caught quite a few fish. Now, him on the other hand, not so many, but he's doing a great job. Well, today we didn't catch that many fish, but tomorrow, better. This morning we go way up the river into the real wild country, to a big pool below rocky cliffs where peregrine falcons make nests in the caves. The fish here don't see lures, so we might be in with a good chance for a smallmouth. Russ loses another one. It's about time I land a fish, though I nearly lose myself in the process. That is my first fingling of the trip. The bite must be on as Mitchell lands another fish. And this time, even Russ manages to keep one on the hook. And so after a fine excursion out into the wilds, we are faced with a rather lengthy rock hop back home along the bouldery shores of a river with no name. 